Hey, it's Luke Wartone, your go-to video guy, and I want to welcome you to the 2022 Marketing Trends and Opportunities webinar. Each year, well, at the end of each year, I do a deep dive on research for trends for the coming year, and I am delighted to share some of that with you because it's going to have a big impact on our businesses and on marketers specifically. So let's jump right in and get started. So today we're gonna to talk about some marketing trends and opportunities for 2022. And we're gonna look at what to expect specifically around marketing and video and how you can benefit from some of these trends this coming year. Uh, again, as I said, I'm Lou Bartone. I've been doing video marketing since before it was a thing really in 2005, same time YouTube started. And as I said, I do a lot of research at the end of the year and during the break to uh, identify and share these cultural trends and consumer trends for you. So let's take a look at some of them. Now, I know that Abe Lincoln said the most reliable way to predict the future is to create it, but these days that's not so simple with so much uncertainty. So I think I'll stick with the JFK quote that says, change is the law of life. And those who look only to the past or present are certain to miss the future. So we're going to look at some 2022 predictions and some overall trends, including, and I'll explain what all of these mean in a moment, the pursuit of purpose, the great reset, which is related to adventure awaits. We're going to talk about the attention recession and what that means to marketers. We're going to talk a little bit about focusing on the customer experience, why storytelling is still king, and how personalization will dominate marketing in 2022 and beyond. So again, we're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump right in here and talk about the pursuit of purpose. This is a really fascinating trend that is a result of the last two years in the pandemic. And, that, and basically what the pursuit of purpose means is that the pandemic has really changed us um, in more ways than we may imagine. We've had more time to reflect and reassess because we've been sort of cooped up for so long in lockdown, we are longing for more adventure. We're ready to hit the reset button on our lives, on our careers, on our work. We're looking for more creative expression and novelty trumps security, which means we are now actually more willing to take risks and try new things and new experiences because the pandemic has shown us that there is more to life than just working. What we're also seeing is something called the attention recession. We've realized because of the pandemic that time is more precious than ever. At the same time, we are getting burnt out on news. There's so much bad news and the constant ongoing 24 seven news cycle is really starting to burn us out. In fact, CNN's ratings are down over 50% year to year. Now what that's led to since we're not watching as much news or we're tired of the news is it's led to a streaming boom, which maybe is no surprise. We've all been hearing about the um, growth of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus. And for Gen Z, that streaming includes gaming. Just when you thought gaming couldn't get any bigger, it has due to the pandemic. And overall, there's been, I know you've heard of Zoom fatigue, but there's an overall screen fatigue that's driving an audio boom, meaning some folks are so sick of either binging or looking at their screens or checking their iPhones that they're listening to more audio in the way of podcasts and music streaming. So ultimately what the attention reception means is that we as marketers have to do a better job focusing on our customers and clients. We don't want to be just something that takes up more time. We don't want to be a time suck. We really have to provide value and add value to someone's life, as it says here. And if possible, maybe even provide a little bit of escapism, uh, as it says here, which gaming and audio are almost by default. So again, escapism is a quality that will remain in high demand in a post-pandemic world. Now, another trend that we're seeing overall is personalization. We have to treat customers more like people and not commodities. We really have to think of the individual. We have to pay more attention to what our customers are saying and listen 
and act on that feedback. Another outcropping of this is using personal outreach as in video email. And I'm gonna explain a lot about that and talk a lot about personal outreach because it is so powerful and such a great way to connect and engage with our customers, clients, and prospects. So we'll get to that in a moment. In the meantime, there's also more of a focus on authenticity and transparency, which means live video continues to grow because people like that in the moment, uh, sort of come as you are video. And really it's about delivering the right message at the right time using the right channel or platform. We'll get a little more into that in a moment. In the meantime, I wanna talk about specific marketing trends. And we're gonna look at five different marketing trends for 2022 that you can take advantage of. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is called video first, which is basically an expression that I think I made up. Um, I haven't heard it anywhere else. And we'll talk about that. Obviously, we'll come back to personalization because that is so important now. We're going to talk a little bit about less is more video production, which is good news for those of us who don't like editing. Uh, and that related to that is real you videos. We talked about authenticity a moment ago. So we're going to talk about real you videos like live videos. And lastly, we'll talk about short form videos and the growth of TikTok and what it means to you even if your audience is not teens like the majority of TikTok audiences. So let's, uh, before we get to that, we're gonna look at a couple of other marketing trends that you wanna be aware of just as an aside. And one of those is that people are watching video without audio more than ever, particularly on Facebook and LinkedIn. So knowing that most people are viewing videos with the sound off, it's more important than ever that you use captions so that folks can follow along if they're watching your video with the sound off. Another trend is folks moving from blogs to vlogs. People want to watch rather than read in most cases. So people who have traditional blogs are moving to video blogs or at least starting to include video in their blogs to make the experience uh, more palatable for their viewers. Also interactive and shoppable videos are coming into play a lot more, uh, which is a little bit more of an advanced tactic. Obviously the rise of TikTok, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Live video continues to grow and LinkedIn provides a lot of new video opportunities. They were very late to the video game, but they've come on strong in the last 18 months. So let's look at trend number one, and that is video First, basically all of the following marketing trends for 2022 and beyond have one thing in common, that, and that is leading with video. Leading with video is the way to go in 2022. Uh, all the research confirms that video is more engaging, more effective, and more preferred than any other medium. So while video may have been a luxury a year or two ago, it is now a necessity. It is must have marketing. And video is still the primary way we can connect and engage right now, even more so as the pandemic continues and we go back into various lockdowns and having live events canceled and things like that. Uh, in addition, video is ripe for leveraging and repurposing. It is the easiest resource to reuse and repurpose. It is also the single most engaging tool to connect with your audience because video builds no like and trust faster than any other platform. And ultimately, video accelerates the sales process and generates revenue for your business. And that's really the bottom line. By 2022, online videos will make up more than 82% of all consumer internet traffic. That's 15 times higher than it was in 2017. So obviously the internet is moving in the direction of video and we have to move in that direction too. Um, when we talk about video first, we see that video is the number one purchase driver. It is the number one most helpful consumers rated video, the number one most helpful form of content when shopping online. In addition, it's the most preferred by marketers. Video has the best return on investment for marketers advertising their business. 
And again, it's a growth driver with 93% of businesses landing a new customer after sharing a video on social media. How do consumers want to learn about a new product? The vast majority, 68%, indicated that short video is the way they want to learn about a new product or service, which really dwarfs text-based articles, infographics, pitches, and eBooks. So again, we come back to video first. Give the consumers what they want the way they want it. Video also has a lot to do with sales and the purchasing decision. decision. Consumers who watch explainer videos regarding products, 94%. Consumers who bought products after watching videos, 84%. So again, video is driving sales. That's why we want to adopt a video first attitude. In addition, Video dominates social media. When asked which type of content gets the best engagement on social media, 74% of marketers chose video, vastly more than any other combined, uh, more than images, text, and other combined. 74% say that, that social media is driven by video, and video is the content that gets the most engagement on social media. And lastly, videos are shared 1,200% more often than text and image content combined. So if you want to go viral, if you want to be shared, video is the way to go. 95% of viewers are more likely to remember a call to action after watching a video versus just 10% when that call to action is in text. If you take no other statistic away from this, realize that your viewers are much more likely to remember a CTA after watching a video rather than just reading it. Trend number two is video personalization, one of my favorites. Now, I've been using this for several years, and my video emails have a 75% open rate compared to about a 10 or 15% open rate to print or text emails. Now, we mentioned before video personalization is a hot trend. It really does pay to personalize and customize your video outreach with video email. Personalized videos are 35% more likely to retain viewers as compared to non-personalized videos, according to HubSpot. And again, there are dozens of simple and affordable video email tools, which we will share with you in this training in just a moment. And again, we can see here which video qualities affect consumer decision-making the most. If the video is personalized to products I own or am interested in at 48%. Video email is really powerful because through video, people are able to read your body language, hear the tone of your voice, experience additional layers to your message, better determine what it would be like to potentially work with you. And they can get a better sense of exactly what you're trying to say there is no ambiguity in video like there is in email. So if you're sending a video email, people can really see who you are, what you're all about, and can accurately see your level of sincerity, unlike text email, which can be easily misinterpreted. And the Harvard Business Review determined that face-to-face -face requests were 34 times more likely to garner positive responses than emails. And again, these days in a pandemic society, face-to-face -face also includes screen-to-screen. -screen. So if you are using video email, that is as good as face-to-face. -face. Adding videos to your email, adding videos to your email marketing campaign improves click rates by 300%. So what to send when you are doing a video email or video outreach? You can use video email for thank you messages, which is one of the easiest and best ways to use video. You can use it for birthday greetings, holiday greetings, special occasions. You can send a video email as an introduction before an appointment or after an appointment as a follow-up. Very powerful and very engaging. You can use video emails even internally for project or process updates uh, or for meeting summaries and next steps. Video email is also perfect for complicated explanations that are difficult to write out, or if a demonstration of something is better seen than heard. Again, personalized videos retain 
viewers 35% more often than videos that are not personalized. And there are a lot of very easy and affordable and accessible video outreach tools. And we're gonna look at a few of them here like Loom, Vidyard, Dub.com, SendSpark.com, WarmWelcome.com. So let's take a look at a couple of these different video outreach tools that are really the low hanging fruit of video. They're very easy to use and very affordable. Loom.com is, is one of my go-tos. It's really simple to use, very low cost. There's even a free version. And as you can see here, I can pop up in my little bubble from any web page that I want. In this case, I'm on my YouTube page. And best of all, when I'm done with that message, I can include a clickable call to action so that when people are done watching the video email, they simply have to click a button to go to a website or make an appointment. In this case, I was promoting my Tuscany mastermind. So I was sharing some of the photos with folks and I had a call to action button in the upper right that says curious details here. Obviously, when you click on that button, you go directly to the Tuscany Mastermind website. And yes, I did have 88 tabs open, so don't judge. Uh, Vidyard.com is another excellent tool for video email. It's free, it's easy to use, it's a Google Chrome extension, so you can install it and pull it right down from your Chrome toolbar. And again, Vidyard is a great company in Canada that does excellent things with sales videos in particular. So check out vidyard.com and grab their free video email tool. Dub.com is another tool that you can use for video outreach. Uh, Dub.com is more expensive, but they do have more bells and whistles in terms of uh, analytics and things like that. I tend to go to the, the lower cost ones like Warm Welcome and SendSpark. Warmwelcome.com is an excellent video outreach tool because they give you several different types of videos or what they call widgets that you can use. So you can create a video business card like this, which obviously would be me on the video and not the woman with my info on the right-hand side. Best of all, um, people can reply back to you via video, audio, or text. So you're giving them three easy ways to respond to your video email. You can create video email signatures with warm welcome. You can create video emails like this with warm welcome. And again, here you can include a call to action in the video. You can brand it. You can see my logo on the top of this video and you can use it sending your own email service or warm welcomes email service. So it's very easy, very flexible and they have a lot of cool widgets. My favorite widget in Warm Welcome is called the bubble, a video bubble for your website. So you record a quick video like you see in the lower right hand corner and you can put that video bubble on any website or web page that you own or control. So if I go to my done for you video website on the lower right hand side, you can see there's a little uh, bubble, video bubble that I created with Warm Welcome and it says, click me. If you click that bubble, you get a pop-up video with a full video message, personalized, and it can be on any web page you wanna put it on. So I can do an extra video message here right on top of the video site, on the video done for you site. And again, the people can reply via video, audio, or text. So you're giving folks a way to interact and start a conversation with you. And if they don't wanna use video, they can reply by text. These video widgets are really powerful and they get a ton of clicks. So I know when people are going to this webpage that they're clicking on that little button and they are seeing the message. So that's one of the advantages of Warm Welcome. If you decide to use SendSpark, which is very similar and also very low cost for your video outreach, you can um, use this one, which again, is very, very much like Warm Welcome. It has a few different features and a few different things, which I'll explain here. If you're sending a video email from SendSpark, you can add um, your, customize your message, and you can also add a customized call to action. In this case, when people watch the video, they can click the blue button below the video, 
where they're able to get on my schedule. So that will bring them directly to my calendar. And that link can be whatever you want. You can lead them to a sales page or a call or whatever you prefer. But the powerful thing is that people don't have to leave your video email to click and get to you and have that direct contact. So SendSpark is pretty cool for sending video emails. In addition, one of the features that SendSpark has that some of the others don't is you can request a video from anyone. So if you want to get a video testimonial or you want to get a video from someone and video testimonials are notoriously hard to get because the person you're asking may not know what software to use or they may not know what to say. This makes it pretty easy for them because all they have to do when we request a video from them is put in their name and email and click the start recording button. What you get on your end back from them is a customized video testimonial. So again, you can use those video testimonials on websites or wherever you want, but you're making it very easy for your clients or colleagues to create that video email, that video testimonial for you because they don't have to jump through any hoops. They don't have to download any software. This button takes them right to SendSpark, which they don't even have to have installed, and they can record their video and you get it back on the other side on SendSpark. So again, all of this stuff really helps with your video personalization and your video outreach. Let's move on to trend number three, less video production. I think this is gonna be really good news for most people because most people do not want to do more video production. They do not want to do a lot of editing. They get bogged down with video editing. Well, the good news, if there is any out of all this work from home stuff, is that work from home has led to lower quality expectations. So when you combine the fact that people don't have as many expectations for fancy schmancy videos with the fact that you can use a mobile phone to do a film quality video, the cameras on the mobile phones are amazing. So when you combine those, you have a great recipe for basically just doing your point and shoot video without doing a lot of post-production. Now, on the other hand, Zoom went from 10 million users a day in 2019 to 350 million users in 2020, which is a 2,900% increase. So everyone's on Zoom. Everyone is used to seeing and doing videos that way. So there is, again, a little bit of a... Um, lower quality expectation. People don't expect a lot of flash and sizzle from a Zoom video. At the same time, live video, in other words, live in the moment, on the fly, unedited video continues to grow and people are totally fine with it. As long as you focus on the content over the quality, you'll be totally fine. And creativity doesn't necessarily require expensive gear. Focus on the content, focus on the storytelling aspects of it, and don't worry as much about, you know, the appearance and the quality and all that. I mean, obviously you want them to be able to see and hear the video, but pretty much whether you're doing a video on Zoom or on your iPhone or Android, chances are it's going to look pretty good right out of the box. In fact, video marketing no longer needs high-end technology and a large production budget. Even large corporations with vast pockets are using cell phones to produce more relevant and genuine content. Now, related to that, closely related to that is trend number four, which is authenticity rules. In other words, the demand for live video continues to grow. So you have at your fingertips, you can use Facebook Live to connect and engage anytime, 24 seven, come as you are on the fly, nothing fancy. You can do it from your phone, your desktop, your mobile device, whatever it may be. Um, live video is really the low hanging fruit of video because it's so easy to do and you don't have to do any editing. In fact, vlogging or video blogging is overtaking blogging because videos are more personal engage and engaging than print. In, in addition, live videos are prioritized by social algorithms. So when you're doing a live video on Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube, it's going to get more play than just a pre-recorded video or any other kind of content you can post. 
If you do want to make your live video a little more flashy, tools like StreamYard.com make live video look really cool and professional, and you can go live to multiple platforms simultaneously. So when I use StreamYard, I go live to Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube at the same time. Very powerful way to get yourself out there. In fact, there will be 15 times more live video traffic in 2022 than there was in 2017. So live video does continue to grow. It's not too late to get in the game if you haven't started yet. There's still a long runway and lots of potential for live video. Another thing that you should keep in mind that's really important is that users on Facebook spend three times as much time watching live videos as they do watching pre-recorded ones. And live content produces six times as many interactions according to online pixels. If you look at the perceived benefits of live video, people prefer the more authentic interactions, 79% said that a benefit of live video is the more authentic interaction. It adds a human touch to digital marketing. Again, we come back to authenticity and personalization. The content that you record live can be repurposed later and you can get real time audience feedback. So there are a lot of benefits to doing live video. And if you're not doing it already, now's a great time to start. And finally, trend number five, short is sweet. So TikTok growth is exploding. They now have 1 billion users and TikTok has surpassed Instagram to become the second favorite social media platform among US teens. Now keep in mind 50% of TikTok's users are under age 29, but that also means that 50% of their users are over age 29. Other platforms for short videos include YouTube Shorts, which is relatively new, Instagram Reels, and Snapchats. Now, even if you're not using TikTok or you feel like your audience isn't there, think about TikTok style videos or shorter videos because short videos appeal to short attention spans. So again, there's a lot of potential in TikTok, but there's obviously still a vital and important place for long form video as well. The thing about TikTok's audience, which is interesting, is again, the vast majority may be 18 to 24 or 25 to 34, but there's still a growing audience and there is an audience there for you know sort of middle-aged or older demographics. So don't ignore the growth of TikTok. TikTok uses watch over 1 billion videos every day. Uh, but do keep in mind that 69% of these users are aged between 13 and 24. But the other thing I want you to consider before we wrap up here is where do people actually go to watch videos? Now, if you're on Facebook, you're going to see videos, obviously, if you're on Instagram. But if somebody wants to seek out a video and actually say, I need to go find such and such a video, or I need to go see this video, they are gonna choose YouTube 90% of the time. YouTube is still far and away the go-to site for where users go to watch video. Now, Facebook is no slouch at 51%, uh, Instagram at 38%, Vimeo, which is similar to YouTube, comes in at 11%. So think about that. I mean, you obviously wanna be as, on as many platforms as possible, but you absolutely can't ignore YouTube. What are some of the challenges that we face and why aren't we doing more video if video is so powerful and effective? Well, according to this recent survey, over 18% of people say that getting started is the biggest challenge. Another 15% say finding the right content is a struggle. And 13% say finding time to do video is also difficult. The other reasons for not doing video are things that marketers are struggling with include consistency, camera shyness, video quality, video engagement, video strategy, which I think is a lot more important than some people think, and finding the right tools. So what if you could have a course or a class or a program that addressed each and every one of these challenges? Well, I spent a long time looking at these challenges and digging into them, and I created my video marketing masterclass to address that. So the masterclass is an anytime 
watch when you want, go at your own pace, 24 seven masterclass on everything video. In this masterclass, we're gonna look at getting started, making video more simple, talking about what's working now, maximizing your platforms, whether you wanna look at Instagram or TikTok or YouTube. Uh, we'll talk about video content creation. And of course, we'll talk about creating your own customized video marketing plan or strategy. A new training is released each week for six weeks. Doesn't matter when you start. It doesn't matter when you finish really, but a new training is released each week for six weeks. And in addition to that, there are a ton of resources inside the learning area. So this is an anytime self-study course that's gonna cover how to get started with video, how to find time to make videos more quickly and more easily. We're gonna talk about establishing your video goals and strategy. We'll look at finding the right content and what to say on camera. We'll talk more about systemizing and automating video so that you can do it consistently and regularly without spending a ton of time on it. We'll look at low cost tools and resources for making the job easier. We're even gonna talk about getting past your camera shyness and becoming more confident on camera so that you can make great quality videos simply and quickly without the hassle. So you can check the link below to find out more about this self-study course. And again, we have six modules that you can watch at your own pace. A new video will be released every week, a new training. They're about 40, 45 minutes each. And you'll have lifetime access to all the video training replays and all the content in Thinkific. In addition, there's a bonus live training for putting it all together. There's Q and A's, weekly Q and A's. We'll, we throw in the seven must have video course. We give you 20 fill in the blank video script templates to get started with. Another 31 video content ideas or prompt. We have a mini course about TikTok in there. We've got how to edit your videos using Camtasia. And you also get a private video strategy session with me. So we can talk about your specific needs, your specific challenges, and your specific plan. So if you want to really tackle and tame video in 2022 and beyond, this masterclass is the way to go. You can check out the details at the link, and we hope to see you inside the Anytime, Anywhere Video Marketing Masterclass. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these trends will help you capitalize and grow your business in 2022 and beyond. This is Lou Borton. Feel free to reach out to me anytime directly at vip at loubortone.com. Thanks so much. Bye for now.